Okay, hello. Welcome back to Josh Explains Speedruns or whatever this is called. Uh, this is part two. If you haven't watched part one, go find part one and watch it. It's probably on the screen or in the description or a pinned comment or a billion other places. I don't know. Uh, this is part two. Here we go. All right, wear flowers in your hair. So this is the first mission of San Fierro. It's like a tutorial mission for like the map. It shows you, like, where a bunch of important places are, like the police station and the hospital, you know, places you're going to go to and then be disorientated. Um, it also sets up a bunch of story and whatnot. But speedrun-wise, the first thing to talk about is that we go through this tunnel, because uh, this is the shortest way to this first marker. But the thing with these markers in this mission is they work a very, very weird way. Um, what you have to do is that you have to be inside of like the marker's hitbox or whatever which is like a little bit bigger than it looks um but then you need to you need to stop moving right and then you need to honk for most of them some of them you don't need to honk for but but this type of marker where there's like a guy here right who you need to get the attention of or whatever uh there we go there's there's a guy um you need to stop in this marker, uh, kill all your speeds, because the marker doesn't stop for you. You have to stop in the marker. And then you need to, like, hold the honk key in order to do it. So if I if I unmute this and play it, you'll hear that I'm, like, actually honking. Uh, come on, go away. Okay. See the honk? And you see how the marker doesn't trigger until I stop. So it's difficult, especially this one, where you're, like, jumping down from here and then landing, like, here or whatever. And then you need to honk at this guy. Um, it's really awkward to like try to stop the car and honk and be in the marker all at the same time. And it kind of, yeah, it's... the, the There's a different type of marker in this mission that's also used. But this one is like the really annoying one, kind of. So then a cutscene starts and then it places you... It always places you the same way, which is also really annoying. So you always face like this way, like as there's forwards or whatever. You always face directly towards this thing, so you have to then turn around. It's kind of annoying. In this run, it's all pretty good. I get it fine. Uh, then continuing to the next marker. The next one's the hospital. So I'm driving up here. I get a decent run up the hill. It seems fine. Um, traffic can sometimes screw you here, but thankfully not. You just take the... Oh, hey, thanks. Take the thing to get, like, the tightest line possible. Um, driving down the road, despawning cars. You know, this mission is just all about driving. Just driving as fast as possible. And then we go down. Yeah, so then this next marker here. This is a different kind of marker. Um, so this marker is, like... It's like a normal you drive into it marker or whatever. But the thing with it is, is like when when you drive into it, the cutscene can point you one of two ways. So there's like it like takes your angle or whatever. And if you're pointing if you're pointing like east, let's say this is east. If you're pointing even a tiny bit east, so say I park the car like like this, right? And this this way is forwards. Say I park the car like that, so I'm pointing like mostly south, but a tiny bit east. After the cutscene, it's gonna point me a hundred percent east. And then vice versa, if I point west, those are the wrong way round, aren't they? Those are the wrong way round. Whatever. <laughs> if I point east, this is west. Um, because north is like here. Uh, if I point west, like, even a little bit, it's going to point me all the way west. But if I point east, even a tiny bit, it'll then turn me around. And after this mission, I want to turn around and drive back out this way. So, in an ideal world, you would, like, turn the car around and hit the marker from the other way. To, like, then be pointing this way at the end of it. But the problem is, this marker hits, this triggers as soon as you hit it. You don't stop it or anything. So... It's like really annoying, but it's kind of just better to just drive straight into the marker and just trigger it like this. And then deal with the whole turning around afterwards. Um, I have experimented with turning around here and pointing the other way, but 
Yeah, it's like, you waste so much time just messing it up, it's not worth it. And then this run, I just don't bother. I, I haven't bothered in a while. Alright, then drive up here. This is another honk marker. But it's another one of the... It's another one of the 50-50 pointing markers. So if I take this line... Uh, we got we got north and south. If I point a, even a little bit south, I'll get pointed 100% south down this road. But if I point even like a little bit north, I'll be pointing 100% north after the cutscene. And I want to be north because I want to go this way after the cutscene. So I like... And also, it's another... Yeah, I have to manually stop in it and I have to honk. So this one I like spin do you see i like i drift right before the marker as the keyframes die i drift into the marker so i'm pointing this way because obviously you're coming in it at like a this way angle but i just stop in the marker and honk and then if you see after this cutscene, i'll be pointing like pointing 100 percent this way do you see uh the video is still really dark and i don't understand why and it's kind of upsetting whatever hopefully that's a little bit brighter this time anyway driving on the next one the next one is another, like, non-honking 50-50 marker. So, I'm getting a little unlucky with traffic here, but that's alright. Managed to get around. So, you can see, I'm taking a wide angle here, right? Like, if I go back a bit. Um, if I go this way here, and I can, I can use the next frame button, which I forgot existed last time. So... You would think, as my cat screams at me, uh, you would think that the best way would just be straight on like this, obviously. Um, but it's another, yeah, it's another 50-50 marker. So you've got you got east and you got west, and I want to go west after the the cutscene. So what I'm gonna I'm doing is I'm doing all the way around like this, and then pointing just a little bit west as I hit the marker. Um, but this is like another insta trigger marker, so I need to be careful. But I'm gonna go around like this, and then spinala like that. You see, and then I'm pointing west. I didn't, I sp I span a little too much. I didn't have to do as much as that. I didn't quite get the angle right. Like I wasted a lot of time turning when I didn't need to. But it's fine. I got I got around it. It's all good. All right, and then driving. This drive's a little awkward because on this one I need to go across like. You've got the you've got the construction yard here on the mini map down here, uh, and I need to drive like diagonally across it and go down this road. But the problem is the like the hills, the topography of the place is really annoying. So you've got like this hill here that has like this bit here, like this, uh, and then there's like a big drop down here that leads to the garage and if I fall in that it's a real pain in the ass to get out but then you've got like another bit that goes like that and there's another drop down here and there's all sorts of bumps and crap here so driving across this is really awkward um I think you can see in my car like it's really airborne but I get around it but it's also awkward because after this I need to go to the garage as well but I have to go down that big drop right this is another 50 50 marker but with a stopping and honking marker. So again, I'm taking a wide angle and I'm going to turn around and then honk. You get the idea by now. There you go. Again, I'm turning around too much. But specifically with this marker, you kind of want to turn around too much. Because if I, if I, if I just, let's say if I draw the 50-50 line again, if I just barely face north, right... I run the risk of just running zero over, which would fail the mission if I kill him. So I kind of do want to turn it all the way around. But I could, like, like this is, like, enough, right? Like, if I stopped right here, like, the 50-50 marker is like this. Uh, and my angle is more north than south. So that would be enough. But if I kept rolling forwards, I would just splatter zero, which would be upsetting. So I do cut, turn the car around a lot there. Uh, I'm still tweaking, like, the brightness and stuff. That looks better. Alright, anyway, going along here, taking racing lines, all that good stuff. Yeah, so this is the awkward bit. You've got, like, uh, whoops. You've got this, this hill here with, like, you know, downwards slope like that. And then there's, like, this no man's dead zone here. But I want to get into the marker. But this marker is another 50-50 marker. 
But this one, you have to be pointing, like, uh, what is that? You have to be pointing west. If you're pointing predominantly east, the marker isn't going to trigger. So you have to, like, turn the car around and hit the marker. Okay. I did that pretty well, actually, in this run. That went, that was really good. So sometimes I'm, like, spinning here for ages, or I'm, like, backing up and going forwards and stuff, trying to get into it. But this, I just, I just barely face, just barely enough north. Uh, sorry, not north, the other one, west. Like, just barely face enough west for it to trigger, like that. There we go. And that's where flowers in your hair. A somewhat simple mission on the surface, but the way the markers work, kind of... You have to, like, plan what you're going to do <laughs> before you get there. Alright, time for 555. So in this mission, I'm going to go to a place, and then uh, I need to kill the, the valet for his clothes or whatever. But, but during it, I'm going to wait for the DA to turn up with his vehicle. Um, and then you have to, like, steal the vehicle or whatever and drive it back here. But... We'll worry about the first part for now, which is stealing the vehicle. In ye olden days, you would just kill the valet, go back up, and then wait for the DA. And the DA would take absolutely forever to get to the, the parking spot. So what you would do is you would go to like you would go to the ocean and swim for a bit to train lung capacity, which is a thing we'll get into later. Uh and then you'd come back and then you'd run all the way back up to the valet thing before the DA got back. And that was good because you could train lung capacity during the down times. You wouldn't lose any time. But then people found out that it was actually possible to spawn the valet quicker. And to my understanding, what you need to spawn the, the, the DA, not the valet, sorry. What you need to spawn the DA quicker is, is three things. You need to... You need to park a car that the valets will spawn. I don't know why I drew lines. You need to you need to park park. I, I'm not gonna write this. Down. You need to park a car that the the valets can to go park themselves. You need to put it in front of them. You need to push the valets backwards towards the building so that they have to walk towards their sp standing point to wait for cars. And then you need to, when you, when you start waiting for the DA, you need to look a specific way to get him to spawn in the right place. Um, the thing is, valets cannot park cars with submissions, like taxis. Uh, so I need to, and they can't park bikes either. So here, I'm looking for a specific vehicle, like a, yeah, Clover's good. I need a specific vehicle that the valets can actually park. So, I'm driving up, uh, take a specific route through these, like, triple buildings here. It's just like, the, you know, this this is basically like a road, but there's no cars on it, which is good, and it leads me, like, straight down this northern road here. Uh, drive in, drive in, drive in. Hit this corner. There's another marker here. So, as soon as I get into this marker, we watch a little cutscene, I play a replay, like usual. So, yeah, so here I'm going to do the thing where I'm going to push, push these valets. So, so if I, this here, we say it's like one, two, three, maybe four squares, like these squares away from the building, right? Keep that in mind. So they, they're, this, they're like four and a bit. Squares or free or whatever tiles away from the thing. I'm gonna like nudge them very carefully You've got to be really careful here because if you run them over the mission will just instantly fail There's like a million different ways to fail 555. It's really a horrible mission to do But anyway, I nudge them back a bit like that now that doesn't seem very important, but what that's gonna do is Trick the mission basically uh, and then I park my car here right so that they can valet it uh, but you notice they won't actually valet it until I get back. See, it's like st stood there, just stood there, just chilling. Uh, now i got to wait for the DA, uh, sorry, the valet to drive down into the car park so I can kill him. I get a lo little, lucky, lo yeah, little unlucky with traffic lights and car spawns here, but it's not that bad to wait. I go down, st I stand exactly at like this line here. 
um, so that I can like this this um, this line here seems a pretty good reference point. If you're too far out of the the car park, you'll get a wanted star and you'll fail the mission for killing him. But if you're like in the car park, you won't. So I think this is like a pretty good visual reference for in the car park. You might be able to stand a little bit closer, but it doesn't matter. This is good enough for me. Stand here, I shotgun the guy, get up his clothes. Now, cutscene happens. I'm still controlling. You see, I, I, I'm still controlling CJ in this cutscene. So if we look for when, like, I actually pick up the clothes and the, the, the fade-out happens, I'm, like, here when the fade-out happens, right? And then, like, after the fade-out's ended... I'm like all the way over here, right? It's because I'm just running while the, the game's faded out. It never takes control away. But now this is going to get a little awkward because I'm looking... Uh, is that... The camera angle's almost good enough. Sort of. That'll do. Um, I don't want to go any more forwards in case I turn the camera. But uh, what I'm going to do is as soon as I get into this marker, I'm going to look like this way. So... There's, I think, three places that the, the DA can spawn before he drives up. And it's down this road, down this road, and also, if I draw on the minimap instead, there's this road, there's this road, and there's this road here. Um, and you can manipulate which one he spawns at by looking at two of them. So if I look at these two, he'll spawn here. If I instead look at these two, he'll spawn here, etc, etc. Um, but I'm going to manipulate his spawn. But the more important thing here is that the valets are still stood back here and there's a car waiting for them. So I'm going to run into the marker and I'm going to look specifically... Yeah, here we go, me setting the camera up, looking this way. And then this cutscene will happen... And as soon as this cutscene's over, it's showing me the, the DA or whatever. As soon as this cutscene's over, the valets, if we look on the right, they'll walk forwards like this. There they are. And then one of them will go take the car away. Now what's happening here, what I think is happening, I'm not 100% certain on this, but what I think is happening is the way the mission script works is it makes you wait a certain amount of time and I think it determines that time based on whether the valets how many like cars or whatever it thinks the valets have taken so because the valets have moved from a place to their waiting position the mission assumes that they've come all the way from like the car park and ran all the way back here so that's like oh they've both delivered a car right because they've moved from a place to their waiting position so the, the mission assumes that they've come from the car park all the way to here. And then this guy is delivering this car. So the game's like, oh, there's one, two, three cars that have been valeted, right? And after the third car has been valeted, they'll ill spawn the DA, right? I think that's what's happening. I might be totally wrong. Check out the comments section if... Maybe someone's correcting me and I'll pin it or whatever or favorite it. But I think that's what's happening here. So by nudging the nudging the valets to like towards the building like back here, when they've walked back to their spot, the game thinks that, you know, two or the mission assumes that two vehicles have been valeted because the valets have moved up to their position. And then the third car is about to be delivered because my parked car is there. And then that will make it so that the DA spawns really quickly. Now, I'm looking down this road and this road. So, obviously, the DA is going to spawn on this road. So, if we just wait a little bit, I'll eventually look to the left. And the DA should just be there. Or maybe I don't at all. I don't quite remember what I do in this run. Oh, I'm just chilling. Hey, there's the DA. He's a good tipper. There he is, see. So, what, what would have happened? I don't look, unfortunately. Well, what would have happened is he spawned on this road and then just drove straight in like that. And that's how you get the DA to spawn really quickly in this mission. If you if you mess up one of those things, like you don't push to the valets or you don't park a car that they can steal, you'll be waiting there for like a minute for the DA to spawn. It takes forever. So that's that strat. Um, people always wonder why I'm like pushing them and crap. And that's the reason. 
I think that's the reason anyway, I'm not 100% certain. But it goes well in this run, which is good. I don't normally mess that up anymore, but okay, it's such a big time Can't save, so it's pretty important to do it. Um, what is happening with the volume? There we go. Uh, yeah, that's 555. Five, five. Uh, I'm not mentioning all of the various fail states that can happen, because because uh, there's so many of them. But yeah, all I need to do now is drive back without damaging the car, and uh, yeah, I do, spoilers, I do that. Oh, why are we back here? What? That was interesting. Yeah, drive the car back, park it in the thing. Gotta be careful. I don't wanna... You can slam into this wall. I don't know why I need to draw it, but you can slam into the wall if you hit that marker too fast, which will fail the mission as well. Uh, and then run up and watch this cutscene. Wonderful. Good, so that's 555. Five, five. Hooray! Um, now here is another point in the run where the random car that you find is really important. Um, it's less bad nowadays because we have the replay, so I'll play a replay right before I hit this marker. That loads, you know, the Sultan, the Elegy, and Buffalo, whatever else, into memory, ZR, all that stuff into memory. Uh, and you can see as soon as this mission ends, there's actually a Sultan driving away from me. But you still, even with that replay, you're not, like, guaranteed, here's the Sultan, you're not, like, guaranteed a fast car or anything. Uh, you can see, like, a... a Pickup truck, can't remember what this is called, spawns. But I'm like spinning the camera around to try to spawn as many cars as I can. And yeah, I get a buffalo, so I'm pretty sure I take that. Or not. Does it really get away from me? No, I must shoot the driver. Yeah, okay, I get it. Good, 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 good. Um, and yeah, fast car is really important here. Because not only is it like a long drive all the way back to the garage. But I then need to drive the car back and go down to the next mission, which is Photo Opportunity. Um, so having a good car here is, like, really important. Sorry, Photo Opportunity is the next mission I use the car for. There is another weird effect that can happen here, where if an NPC is trying to drive into the valet place, you will not be able to steal the car. It's like, you press the enter car button right next to it, and CJ just ignores you and nothing happens. Uh, it's really weird. And it's because they're trying to get valeted for whatever reason that makes the car unstealable. But the solution to that is to just shoot them in the face. Which is why I just shoot the buffalo in the face here. Um, even though he's driven past the valet thing. But I'm just like, nah, screw that. Anyway, get the buffalo. Yeah, so that's another little side note thing. Um, what's next? Yeah, deconstruction's next. Let's see, so, yeah, so here I I mess up in this run, it looks like, yeah, I land at, the buffalo is so tilty, <laughs> but here I want to park the car, like, on this road, roughly, um, because, yeah, I want to use it for the next mission, I don't want it to despawn, and I also need to answer a phone call anyway, so this way, if I park the car, like, here... I can, like, get out of the car, run to here, answer the phone call, keep running, and then put the phone call down right as I run into the marker. If I were to park the car here, I'd have to drive a little bit further, and then I'd either skip the phone call, which I don't want to do, or I would just stand here and wait for it anyway. So it's actually better to park a little bit earlier and then, like, take the multiple steps of the phone call before I hit the marker. It's, like, mildly faster to do that. So I'm like trying to park the car on the road here. And yeah, here's the phone call and I like answer it. Fortunately, I get out of the wrong side of the car, which is kind of annoying. But you can see right as I hit the marker, I put the phone call down so I can actually enter it. You can't trigger the marker while you're putting the phone call down. Alright, this is deconstruction. Uh, you've got a bunch of portables that you need to blow up. Um, I don't pull this very off very well in this run. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up here. Switch to the rockets, which I got in Are You Going to San Fierro for shooting the helicopter. And then what I'm trying to do is it's very difficult to see, but you've got like you've got like this building here, right? You see this building? And behind the building of this square here on the minimap, it's like here. You've got one of the, the portables that you need to destroy. Um and right here, there's a tiny, like, open window thing 
that has the portable visible through it. What I'm trying to do is shoot a rocket through that and hit the portable. I'm not super great at it and I mess up in this run and I don't get it. Uh, but there's a backup for it that I do. But yeah, it's like a pretty precise aim. You can see I like I try my best. It's so fast, obviously I can't really show it. But I think I was a little too far to the right there. But yeah, I'm trying to destroy... Because this portable is like the furthest away one. And it's a real pain in the ass. Um, but I, I shoot that one. Uh, the thing with the portables is that if you use explosions, you actually need to hit them with two explosions to get them to blow up. Now, this portable that I shot, I can blow that up with one rocket because it has a bunch of, like, if I if I play the oh, video nice. a bit, uh, you see how this one blows up. You see these red barrels, these red barrels here, these are explodable. So if they get hit by, like, explosion anywhere near them, they'll blow up and they count as another explosion. So this portable here that I blew up with a single rocket actually has, I think it's actually a car next to it that blows up. I don't know, there's something there that causes a secondary explosion. Um, let's have a look again. Yeah, I shoot too far to the right there. There's there's something here that causes a secondary explosion, which allows the rocket to, like, blow it up in one go. But, yeah, the reason I shoot only, like, these portables with rockets, like, uh, this one and this one, is because they're the ones that have, like, explosive barrels next to them that I can do. Uh, this second one here does have explosive barrels next to it, but I'm so close to it that I can just shoot it with a shotgun and it just blows up and it's like I get to save a rocket for later. So now I've destroyed like in ideal world I would have destroyed three portables already. Uh, and then you've got these three left. Now the other way to destroy the portables is by hitting them with a, a heavy vehicle. Uh, and thankfully, you can use, like, the, the bulldozer, which is, like, here, just off screen. But that's really slow. But thankfully, the cement mixers count as a heavy vehicle as well. So you can run them over with this. You just need a lot of speed. So I try to, like... What I'm doing is I'm hitting them, like, on the side. So I could just, like... If I do this... I could just, like, hit them, like, right on the edge, like this. But then that will slow me down loads. And the way the game is detecting whether I've I've hit the thing heavy enough or not is it doesn't actually matter how heavy the collision is. So say you had like say you had like a wall like this, right? Or sorry, I had a wall like this, yeah. And you have a car that's going like a hundred miles an hour or kbh or whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. A hundred whatever. If you drive past the wall like this and just barely scrape the side of it, you're not going to do that much damage, right? But if you drove straight into the end of the wall like this, you're going to do like a shit ton of damage. Like that's a ton of kinetic energy or whatever. That's how physics works and people understand that, right? Like scraping the wall of a thing is way less bad than like hitting it head on. But the thing with this game is that that's not how the calculates collisions. It calculates collisions by if you touch the object it will look at what speed you're doing and use that for the collision so in my wall example if i'm doing a hundred with a car and i just barely scrape the wall the game assumes that it's the same force as if i just drove straight into it at 100 miles an hour right and it uses like that kind of like level of collision and stuff for the the, the damage detection or whatever so with these porta bodies or porta potties with these portables, it makes physical sense to slam into it like that and not just graze past it. But in the run, it's better to graze past it because I keep all my speed and it gets destroyed anyway. So this one I do drive quite heavily into, but you can like really just barely tap it. I don't think I actually do any of these in this run, yeah. But you can just barely scrape past them and they'll fall over. Anyway, there's those three. Yeah, you just drive into them and keep your speed going so you need high enough speed to destroy them. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I missed the rocket shot, so there's one portable left. So what I have to do now is that there's this there's this um, guy here who's there's like a guy sat in this driving it. That is, I don't even know what I'm trying to drive draw there, but there's a guy sat in this here driving it, and he's like stuck in like this area with like these three walls here, like that. 
So he, like, does a whole bunch of, like, U-turning and stuff to try to get out. But he is trying to hit, hurt me. He's trying to get to me and stuff. If you, if, if I successfully, if I had successfully hit this... And he had blown up with rockets or whatever. There's the explosive barrel that blows it up, by the way. If I had successfully hit that, and I had just hit this one, I could just drive on to the next part and everything would be fine. And he'd still be trying to get out of here without being a nuisance. But because I have to stop and destroy the next portable, like this, he now has enough time to, like, get out of this area and become a problem. And he'll, like, he'll be a really big problem when I'm trying to do the next trick later. So all I have to do... Oh yeah, I shoot this with a shotgun. The shotgun actually has like a really long range. You wouldn't expect it. Uh, it's the longest range weapon I have that isn't like the rifle, which would slow me down to use a lot. So I'm just shotgunning these two explosive barrels. And because there's two of them, it will blow the thing up. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the backup shot for that. But now the problem is the guy in this is about to get out and become a big problem. So I just have to kill him, which is like slow, costs time. But I have to kill him in order to make this next trick work. So if I had managed to shoot the portable here through the wall or whatever with the rockets, not only is it just faster because I don't have to shoot it after, it also means I could ignore that guy, which also saves time. Anyway, going around here. So I'm sure everyone's seen this trick uh, if you haven't prepared to have a laugh. But you've got this portable here. I don't know why I'm drawing a 3D thing of it. You've got this portal potty here, which you need to get into the hole. Um, what you're supposed to do is use another heavy vehicle to, like, push it in, and this thing's really weird. The physics for it are very strange. While it's stationary like this, it's a solid object, and you can't do anything to it. You can't run into it or push it or anything. But if a heavy vehicle touches it, it suddenly turns into, like, a movable object and will roll around and stuff until it stops rolling, and then it will, like, lock in place again, and you can't move it anymore. Uh, it's really, really weird. But what you're supposed to do is push it with the thing into the hole. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to park the vehicle up over here, leaving as much space on the right-hand side as possible, but still within the marker that's going to spawn here in a second. And then I'm going to get out, and then I'm going to use the satchels, and I'm going to carefully position myself here, and... You've got these three line things here, and this X. I try to make it so the satchels are going to attach right in the middle here, like a, right in that spot. Uh, if satchels are too far to the left, the thing's going to go to the right. And if it's too far to the right, it's going to go to the left. But I'm going to put the satchels on. You see, that one was a little too far to the right, so I start moving to the left here. So then I correct it, put that one on the left. But yes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow up the thing... I should look at it. So I run away from it and I blow it up and it flings it all the way into this hole perfectly. It doesn't always go that smoothly, which is when the whole pushing it comes into play. But you can't push it once it's stopped moving, so you have to like get it moving again, even with a explosive or with the big vehicle. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm, I'm just getting this to go whoop, into the hole like this. It's a really cool strat. It's a really old strat as well. It's quite great. Reverse non-Newtonian portable toilet, yeah. Alright. So, yeah, I did that. Fill this up, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now, another important thing in this mission is that... Now I have to... Okay, here we go. I have to... Here's Josh explaining another basic concept of San Andreas and how it works. So, you will notice that my buffalo is still here waiting for me. After the mission, which is why I wanted a fast vehicle earlier. Now, this is because I've... Not super carefully, because things went well, but I have managed my vehicle list. So, in the game, the game will always store the last two vehicles that you've been in. Uh, so, here's my picture of a buffalo. What the fuck is that? <laughs> okay, good enough. That's my picture of a buffalo. Uh, and here's my picture of a... Uh, Cement truck. Yeah, that'll do. Perfect. Um, the game will always keep a list of the last two vehicles you've been in. So here's two and here's one, right? Um, and it won't despawn these vehicles 
unless like a mission does it or something but they won't like despawn from distance basically so i can get like really far away from the buffalo and it won't despawn i think there's a timer but i don't remember quite what it is like five minutes or something plenty of time um but because because i've only been in two vehicles my buffalo hadn't despawned had i accidentally flipped the cement mixer or something and i would needed to have get into a second cement mixer what would have happened is then my vehicle list would have been like the the first cement mixer i have to draw another one now good enough the first cement mixer would have moved into slot two and the new cement mixer would have moved into slot one right um and this is my personal vehicle list and then this would have just like moved into nothingness if that had happened it's two minutes okay Two minutes the cars stay in the personal vehicle list. If that had happened, the buffalo would have despawned because it would have moved out of my personal vehicle list. And then because it's really far away, it would have just disappeared, right? Like, you know, normal ve normal vehicles do when you, like, get far away from, like, AIs and stuff. They just disappear. Um, so yeah, I have to... This happens several points in the run. And I think it's a pretty big deal in, like, Vice City speedruns, for example. When you leave that helicopter next to the mall in that one mission but basically i had to be careful to only use like one vehicle and i could use another vehicle but this vehicle would have to get unloaded before i could do that not destroyed destroyed is still loaded it would have had to have been despawned like completely unloaded before i could have got into another vehicle and the game would have replaced slot one instead of slot two for it right so, with careful management, you can keep vehicles not as much as in Vice City, because Vice City's ridiculous for that. But it's a little bit of this in San Andreas, where you can keep vehicles, like, spawned, as long as you don't get into too many of them, and you manage, like, when you get into new ones and stuff like that. So, yeah, so the Buffalo is still there, because I haven't got into, like, a third vehicle. Um, so... That's good. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in this mission. It's really short, but you can lose a lot of time because of it. Alright, so this is photo opportunity. Uh, this mission is really shit. Yeah, here's the buffalo. So I'm going to use it now. And I'm going to drive like along here. Um, so before I talked about swimming in 5... five whoops. I talked about swimming in 555. Five. Um, we don't do that anymore, obviously, because you we... we skip the weight for the da but you still have to swim an amount so so like way later on in the run there's a mission for woozy and it's called amphibious assault and you need to upgrade your lung capacity twice in order to start it otherwise the the cut the different cutscene will play where it tells you that you need to learn how to swim or whatever so i need to train my lung capacity stat two upgrades before i get to that point there used to be like really easy points in the run to do it where we used to wait for things. But now, because we're not waiting for things because that's slow, it's like really awkward. So this is the next best place to do it. So in this mission, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal a boat and I'm going to drive all the way to where Caesar is. And then I'm going to get off the boat and then I'm going to get into his car and then we're going to drive away. Um... This is the best place to swim now, because while I'm traveling along the water, I can, like, let my lung, my oxygen level go back up. You, you'll see. I'm, like, I'm swimming underwater, my oxygen's going down, and then I'm going to get onto the boat, and then I'm going to drive the boat until my oxygen level is almost maximum. And then as soon as my oxygen level almost hits maximum, or oh wow, I was a bit late here, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to get out and I'm going to swim again. So this is a really efficient use of time because obviously I want to train lung capacity, but I'm going to die if I don't have any oxygen. So I want to stay underwater until I run out of oxygen. And then instead of just sitting still and wait for the oxygen to come back, what I'm doing is I'm then actually actively doing something by moving towards the next objective, moving towards the marker, right? So it's a really good use of time. I could just drive all the way there, but that, that would be the fastest, but I wouldn't train anything. I could just sit at the docks and like just go up and down and up and down and up and down swimming forever, but that I'm like wasting all of my up time while I'm waiting for the oxygen to come back. 
uh, and this is like the best middle ground. Um, so I'm actually like traveling and achieving stuff, and I'm gonna be able to upgrade my lung capacity while I'm waiting, while I'm doing it. The next thing to explain here is the specific way in which I'm swimming. So, if you, if we look here, look how fast my oxygen goes down while I'm swimming. You see, it's decreasing very quickly. If I go, if I go back a bit, if we look at the, whoopsie. If we look at the time, I start swimming at like 01, right? 0102 ish. And then the oxygen has fully depleted all of the way by 10. So that's like 8 seconds of swimming, right? If I fast forward to here, you'll notice that I managed to stay underwater for way longer. So if we look at how fast it's decreasing now, very slowly, I went in at like 29 or something, right? And it's already been like. Right, here comes 39. Right, I'm also surfacing each time. But even without the surfacing, you see, look, how slowly it's going down. That's because when you when you move around underwater, your oxygen drains faster. Um, and the way the lung capacity stat increases is that it only counts how long you've been underwater. It doesn't count anything else. It's not distance. It's not how much oxygen you've used or anything like that. It's just pure time spent underwater, right? So by like just what I'm doing is I'm diving underwater and then I'm trying to get like stuck under my boat and I'm not doing anything except like diving and then maybe doing one swim forwards or whatever. But you can see I'm just diving and then I'm like idling until I come back up again and then I dive and then I idle. And what I'm doing there is I'm just maximizing my time spent underwater for like how much oxygen I'm using to do it, right? So again, the oxygen's about to it's about to fill up. So again, I'm going to dive. And you can see I just don't do anything. Rotating is fine, but I'm just not doing anything. I just dive and then I try to get stuck under the boat. If I can like get stuck underneath the boat and it stops me from surfacing, it means I can stay underwater without using any oxygen to move around. Because CJ like naturally like resurfaces or whatever. But if I could like get stuck here, that would be perfect. And I could just sit there and wait it out. And I've sort of done it here. Look, I get stuck a little bit. Uh, I think in this run I actually grab the oysters for fun. Yeah, that actually cost a lot of time doing that. <laughs> well, not a lot of time, but it did cost time doing that. Um, but it was a good laugh. But yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to maximize my time. There's one lung capacity upgrade. Look. I'm trying to maximize my time spent underwater and minimize how much oxygen I use to try to train it as much as possible. Now, the amount that I'm trying to train it here is that the way I do it is I get one lung capacity upgrade and then I do like one more stop like this. Uh, and that's because later in the mission snail trail, I'm going to train the rest of the lung capacity. Um, but the if I wait too long in snail trail, I'll fail the mission I'm on. So, I try to train it as much as possible here without just, like, totally idling in this mission and doing nothing. So, yeah. That's lung capacity explained. There you go. That's what I'm trying to do in this run. I'm just trying to... Here, I'm just idling. See, I'm not even trying to get stuck onto the boat. And I'm being able to stay underwater for ages. But that's lung capacity. Uh, now it's time for 555. Uh, yeah, this mission... Sorry, 555? This is time for photo opportunity. Um, this mission's terrible, because I have to drive all the way to this place, and then you have to drive all the way to another place. But the problem is, the car you have to use is a Savannah, which is the worst car in the game. In the last part, the YouTube comments asked me why I don't use the, the car that has nitrous in it, why I don't use that for the race. And that's because this car is absolutely terrible. It's really horrible. Um, it the, the turning on it is very hard to like explain. If you've ever driven it, you know what I mean. But for whatever reason, they made Sav the Savannah really bad. And it's the car Caesar uses all the time. To add to that, it just started raining. So now like it's like there's a lot less traction on the road and you slip around and stuff. You know, everything you'd expect from rain. Uh, and I'm driving over really rough terrain, and if this car flips over, because it's totally flat, you can't flip it back. 
it's like impossible to flip it back over if that happens. You need like momentum. Normally with like other vehicles, you can sort of just like roll them or whatever. But with this, you just can't. You can't roll it. So it's like a triple whammy of terrible car, terrible weather, terrible terrain, right? So it's like really difficult to not mess up in this mission. Um, thankfully, a lot of the scary parts have been taken away now through like consistent strats. So up here coming up, there's a... You need to drop down into the Truth's Farm or whatever. And this used to be like a really common like death point. So you would try to drive, like, down into Truth's Farm without flipping over. Um, but there was, like, loads of pitfalls and hills and stuff, and it was, like, very difficult to do. But now, it's actually quite easy to do, because what you do is, like, the consistent jump setup you can do. And it's also really fast. So basically what, you're gonna, what I'm doing is I'm driving up to this cliff here, and then I'm going to drive off this cliff at, like, you know, a somewhat precise angle, somewhat this way. And then, while I'm in the air, I'm gonna, like, not everyone knows this, but you can control the, like, pitch of the car. Um, come on. Why is the keyframes messed up? Whatever. You can control the pitch of the car. So, say, like, say, like, this is the car, right? Like that. You can control the pitch, which means, like, the up and down of the ends. Like that. Um... You can control the pitch of it. If you stop accelerating, so you're not holding you're not holding S and your W, so you're not reversing or accelerating. If you do that, you can then use the like arrow keys to like control the pitch of it. So it's angling like down a lot right now. So what I'm probably gonna do is angle the nose back up a bit. But more importantly, if I go back until the keyframes stop breaking, people told me to use a different video player, but I forgot to set it up, so I'm still using VLC. But if we go down like this, there's this hill here. It's very hard to see in this footage. But there's like, there's a top of a hill here. And then it like ends like this. And it has like, there's a smooth downhill here. And a smooth downhill here until this hill here. But whatever, this is the bit we're interested in. This bit here, it's very like smooth and forgiving and it kind of leads naturally the way I want to go. I'm basically just going to land the car exactly on this and there's like no more hills after it or anything and then this is all smooth and everything. And you could just really easily nail this landing, do you see? It's a really, really helpful like little hill thing. So by using that jump, you can like really just easily take out the really difficult bit of that. If you've watched any of my old runs, you know, I've often messed that section up a lot. But yeah, now with that jump, it's like way easier. And yeah, I nail it in this run, which is good. Uh, but it's not over. There's still a few more hills. So specifically this here is like full of hills. So I don't know what the best way to draw the hills is, but you've got like down like this. And then there's another crest here, which goes up and over like that. And then you've got this bit here. This bit is like relatively flat, kind of. But then you've got like a downhill here. Um, and there's just all sorts of bumps. And if you just hit the wrong hill, the wrong bump the wrong way, it's just going to flip you over. Um, but thankfully, I get that pretty good. I do slam in this building, though, but that's all right. Uh, but yeah, I don't flip over there, and everything's good. Cool. Onwards to photo opportunity. The photo part of photo opportunity. So, not too much to say here. Um, playing a replay after taking a photo can skip the, the like, slow motion part of the photo. I don't know if I actually do it very well in this run. Let's have a look. So, snap, and then, yep, yeah, snap, and then replay right after. So, that makes it so that the, there's no slowdown after it. But, anyway, there's not too much interesting here. And then we go here, and then that's that mission. Now... What I'm doing here is I'm trying to find a Sanchez. Uh, I get one on a really fast spot here. But it just seems like Sanchez is spawn a ton in Angel Point around this area for whatever reason. Um, and I want a Sanchez for later. So I want to pick one up here so that I can store it in my garage. Right. Now, coming up after this drive back. You know, fairly standard drive. Nothing too interesting. Now, I'm going to date Katie. So, Katie's a girlfriend in this game. Um, 
uh, uh, girlfriends is like a feature or whatever. Here's Katie. Um, what Katie does, because all the girlfriends have like, well, most of them have like effects when you date them. With Katie, if you die uh, after you, with Katie as your girlfriend, you no longer lose your weapons. And if you're close enough to her house, you'll get teleported to her house, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But the keeping the weapons after death thing is really, really good. Um, so we're going to like, I'm going to death warp. I keep saying we, it's me. I'm going to death warp a whole bunch of this run after this to like save time and stuff. Um, but to order, in order to death warp without losing weapons, yeah, I need Katie. Um, the thing with Katie is that she likes muscly guys, but obviously I'm not going to go to the gym and, like, do a bunch of stuff like that. But I don't remember the details, but there's some kind of glitch with, like, the girlfriend's, like, stat checking stuff. I don't remember exactly the details, but for whatever reason in the run... If you have just enough sex appeal, you can date her no matter what your stats are, I think. Even though my stats are wrong, I should say. So even though my stats are wrong, I could date her if I have enough sex appeal. Now what I'm going to do is, well, earlier in the game, I got the sexiest haircut I could afford, if you remember me talking about that. That was an important part. And now I'm going to take the sexiest vehicle that I can get, which is a caddy. The caddy is one of the sexiest vehicles in the game. I have no idea why, but every vehicle has, like, a sex appeal associated with it, and the caddy has, like, a really high one. Um, the thing with it is that the more damaged the vehicle is, the less sex appeal it has. Uh, I think I got cornrows in this run, right? If I had got jerry curl, I wouldn't be able to damage the caddy at all, because if I did, I would just barely not have enough sex appeal to date her. But because I got the cornrows, I can damage the caddy a little bit. Uh, and you can damage the caddy just by running into it, as I found out in one run. But thankfully here I don't, and the cornrows don't matter. But either way, I now have a ton of sex appeal. And Katie dates me. So, now I have Katie as a girlfriend. Um, Katie is your girlfriend. So, yeah, now I won't ever lose my weapons when I die for the rest of the run. Which is really handy. Okay, and that's why I got sex appeal. Um, oop, that was a bit of a mistake there. So now I'm going to go store the Sanchez in here like this. And then I'm going to immediately make use of make use of Katie. So I'm going to watch this mission, which is just a cutscene. And then that spawns the Jizzy mission on the map, which is on the other side of the other side of the city. So what I'm going to do is just immediately kill myself. Uh, I don't actually do a very good job of it, so I only drop one satchel. But what I'm supposed to do is drop two satchels because I had too much health. Anyway, play a replay as I die. And now I'm at Katie's house. I get teleported there, which like teleports me across the whole city. And now I'm really close to Jizzy. And because of the replay I played before, I should get fast vehicles. I don't actually get a fast vehicle in the end. I take the merit, but it's still fine. It's not that big a drive or whatever. Um, nice splatter or whatever. So yeah, that's that's death warping and Katie and stuff. Uh, and now it's time for Jizzy. So into the marker, play the replay, yada yada yada, all that good stuff. So this mission is just a whole bunch of driving around. There's some objectives you need to do. Um, oh, there is one thing I do here. I drive straight up this hill with the the pimp mobile, as I call it. I don't remember the name of it. But yeah, this drive is kind of awkward to do, and if you lose your speed, you're kind of screwed, but I didn't, thankfully. Uh, right, so this first cutscene here. There's something important I do here, and it's not play replays into this marker. Uh, or in any markers. For some reason, if you play replays into markers in this mission, you can break the mission in really re weird, ra weird ways, and it can, like, end up failing it, which is kind of weird. Anyway, this part here... Um, so there's like a pimp or whatever. Wait until I get like a good shot of this. That'll do. So there's like a pimp here, which you need to kill. And there's like a, a lady here, which you need to not kill. Um, what I want to do is run the pimp over and like instantly kill him with enough speed. You know, the insta-kill thing that I talked about in part one, I'm pretty sure. Um, but the problem is, what I don't want to do is insta-kill the woman. 
And what the pimp does is he'll walk in like a square around the lady like this. So he'll walk until he hits that, and then he turns until he hits that, and then he turns until he hits that, and then like this. Um, so what I'm doing is like, I'm trying to get here at the right time when he's on like this half of the walk cycle bit. If he's on the other half of his cycle, it's like, re like I mean, here you can, but especially here, it's really awkward to run him over. So you better just wait or whatever. But here, I actually think I wait a little bit for him to get over there. Let's see. So I see him in the distance. Yeah, and you can see he's... It's very difficult for you guys, but he's here. And the lady is here. So I, like, slow down and wait for him to walk over to the left before I run him over. But I have to maintain... Like, when I hit him, I have to have enough speed to insta-kill him. So that's a little bit there. Um... I think he runs away or something if you start fighting him or whatever, but I never do that. I always just run him over, so <laughs> I don't know how any of that works. Alright, and then next is this section here. So there's two guys. There, There's 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 a, a lady on the ground who's sad, and there's like a guy here like kicking her, and then there's a guy here keeping watch, and then there's this vehicle here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit the vehicle right here. So that I, when I hit it, I'll ricochet off and kill this guy. But then the vehicle that's sat here will also go around this way. Uh, it's not just vehicles that you're in that can insta-kill people. It's like even just like vehicles with nobody in. If they have enough speed, they'll insta-kill people. So I'm trying to like insta-kill this guy with my car. And insta-kill the other guy with the van, like, spinning and hitting him. Uh, it's kind of awkward, though. I don't actually think I'd do it this run. Oh, no, I do. That's perfect. Look at that. So, yeah, if I go back and play it in slow motion, in case you missed it. Um, so, I, I drive... He starts shooting me. Look, I drive into this, which ricochets me to the left. I hit the guy on the left, but then this van spins around and hits the guy. For whatever reason, I never seem capable of killing the woman here. I don't know if she's, like, invincible or what. But the woman never seems to die whenever I do this. And this one actually went pretty well in my PB here. Um, sometimes this goes, like, really terribly and I have to, like, shoot them both. But that one was pretty good. I get a phone call. And then I have to drive all the way over here again. Um, so the final part of the mission here... There's, again, not playing a replay. Um, there's two vehicles, if I just let it drive past. There's a limo in the front and this, like, black security car in the back. Uh, in this limo, you've got, you've got the guy driving, who's here. And you have, like, the... I don't remember which way round they are, because this is a relatively new strat and I haven't figured it out. But you've got the, you've got the lady, which you can or cannot kill it doesn't matter you can do whatever but then there's the man which you absolutely need to kill like the the preacher or whatever uh but then you also have the protection which is this here but this is just a, a vehicle with two guys in it now in ye olden days you would drive to this intersection stop turn around and then you would shoot rockets at the two vehicles but the thing is sometimes the limo takes two shots with the rocket to kill i know i quite could figure it out why or why not um and this only ever took one thing but the problem was it was is you're in intersection and there's loads of other cars that like drive in and out so what you could do is if you shoot sometimes a car would drive in front of you and you would just shoot the car right in front of your face and kill yourself which would be really annoying um or sometimes the cars would like make these guys drive other way and you'd miss them and stuff like that um, and it was really, really annoying. But nowadays, instead, what we do is something actually simpler, which I'm surprised we didn't do earlier. Apparently, Omega was doing it. But you just get out here, and then you just shoot them. <laughs> you you just shoot them in the face. So the driver's here, and then you've got two people in the back, and then there's these two back here. So as long as you get the driver to the limo, um, it's fine. Because this car... Whoops. This car will follow the limo. Um... But the limo will just drive off and then he drives like a set pattern or whatever and it's like really annoying to chase him down. Um, but here, I just barely catch the guy in the limo and kill him. 
Um, and you can see... Where is it? Okay, so the girl is on the left. I was right. Yeah, because the guy's still talking. So the girl's on the left, and the old guy, the preacher, he's here. Look. He's on the right. Um, well, left, in terms of which way you're looking at it, obviously. But yeah, so just kill those guys with shooting them, and then that's that mission done. You have to get back into the pimpmobile, though. Oh, that guy lived. Oh, this was a bit sloppy. Anyway, the phone call will ring in the pimpmobile, and I answer it. And then after that, mission's over. And then what we used to do here is we used to drive up and go buy a safe house. Uh, let me see if I can try it. Draw a safe house. Yeah, there we go. A little chimney. Some doors. Okay, good stuff. We used to go buy the safe house. And then we'd save to lose the wanted level that I have now. Um, there we go. The wanted level that I have. Because... We want to do a, I want to do a woozy mission next, but the problem is I need to answer a phone call before I can start it. So, and you can't answer, you can't get phone calls when you have wanted stars. So what we would do is go buy the safe house and then save and then go to woozy. Um, but now we have a better strat than that. We just blow ourselves up. <laughs> uh, it's a little awkward though because you're full health and the vehicles around don't want to blow up. But I got there in the end. Uh, yeah, so that gets rid of the free stars. I just lose all my water level, but I have all my weapons and stuff. Uh, and I don't think I'm that much further away from Woozy. I'm definitely not closer, I think, but it's like way faster than like buying the safe house and saving and stuff. So then I'm going to do it, drive around, yeah, go through this little alleyway. Here's the safe house I used to buy, um, but don't do that anymore. Okay, I sort of remember what the safe house icon looked like. <laughs> uh, and then... Here's the woozy missions. I'll just park here for whatever reason. Answer the phone. Yeah, woozy mission. Right, what one is this? There's Mountain Cloud Boys. We need a ride. So, this mission, you got woozy with you. I need to go to a place and kill some dudes. Um, just steal the first vehicle I can see. I got a Sultan, which is really good because of the replays making them spawn. And then up here, I try to turn the car around. So that CJ can get out and go down the alleyway, which is good. Everyone spawns. And then there's this little cutscene here. I don't think I actually skip it, do I? Yeah, there we are. Eventually I skip it. Right, so here, there's like a ton of enemies. So we've got, we've got an enemy here, an enemy here, and then like two here. And then once those two are dead, four guys on Sanchez's are going to drive up. There's my best attempt at a Sanchez. That's not that bad. Uh, four guys on Sanchez's are going to turn up. And, you, and then then when you go around the corner, there's like a whole bunch of enemies over here. Um, thankfully, you... Well, I don't need to kill these two. Or these two. You just ignore them. And you run past. And there's these the four guys on the Sanchez's. You can ignore them. And you just need to kill these guys here. So, it's a little awkward because I don't really have a good angle of it, but there's there's two guys here, there's a snipper here, there's a guy here, there's a guy over here, there's two more guys down this alleyway, two more guys are going to turn up in a car, uh, but you need to kill all of these guys and then the mission will progress, uh, and obviously I'm going to use rockets, so shoot those guys, shoot like here... To hit the snipper and this guy. Then I shoot here to kill this guy. There might be more people around the alleyway. I don't remember. Uh, and then I shoot here once these alleyway people come out. And then you got these two in the cars. Uh, unfortunately I ran out of rockets. So I just shoot them in the face. But that's that bit done. And all the other guys you don't actually need to shoot them. They're totally optional. Uh, good sequence break. Okay. So then coming out. There's two cars with guys in that you need to blow up. Now, this bit's really awkward. So we've got, like, a guy who's, like, over here. And then you've got this guy. The best way to blow them up is to just shoot them or, hell, even shoot the gas tank with the micro SMG that you that you get given or have or whatever. I don't know. Um, but the problem with that is, is then they'll explode. And yeah, the fastest way is to set one on fire and then it explodes and it'll blow up next to the other one and then that one will explode. Um, but obviously, you don't want to die. The thing is, this vehicle actually has a lot of health. 
because the mission script has given it like tons of health. Um, so it can just about survive two explosions. Um, but the problem is, there's also people shooting you with firearms. So if they do too much damage to you, you won't have enough health to survive two explosions anymore. And to make it even worse, sometimes there's like triads or whatever they're called stood around. Uh, I don't know why I always draw them with stupid little penises like that. There we go. There's also some guys that are stood around. And sometimes they have flipping AK-47s to shoot you with. That is a weird ass looking AK-47. But... Yeah, sometimes they have AK-47s to shoot you with, which is a big problem because it does a ton of damage to your car. So, I'm very careful here, and I try to only ever take one explosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive up, shoot this guy. Oh, the car's there, not to the left. I'm dumb. Whatever. I drive up, shoot this guy. Yeah, let's see. You just, did you catch that? There's guys with, with AK-47s and stuff shooting me. Or I don't know what guns they have, actually. Let me... Let me fast forward this a little, or slow forwards this. Um, here, there's like two guys with AK-47 shooting me. And a guy with a pistol. This sucks. So you've got an AK-47 here, an AK-47 here, and a pistol. So, I could have died here if I wasn't careful in this run. I don't even know though these guys here. But what I'm doing is I'm driving forwards. The next marker is going to be like around the corner, like here. Um, back where you started, so I'm kind of driving that way as I'm going. But I also need to kill- I mean, you need to kill these two guys. So I'm just shooting that car. I drive away and wait for it to blow up. Um, but unfortunately it blows up right next to me, which is really scary. So now the vehicle is like pretty low health, comparatively. So I blow up that vehicle, set on fire or whatever, but thankfully he doesn't blow up next to me. If that car had blown up next to me, I would have died, for sure. So the car looks fine, but it actually is pretty low health compared to where it started. Alright, and then that's that mission done. A lot to a lot to it, a lot to all these missions. Alright, except this next one. This next mission. Oh no, 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 not the next one. This the one after this. Uh or I don't remember the route anymore. Whatever. Anyway, this is Ranfali. Um again I'm getting a Sultan, which is good. I don't know why I didn't just take Oh no, I don't have a Sultan, do I? Yeah, I had that. Yeah. So I, I get a Sultan, which is good. Another fast, you know, fast car again. You know, I really like this car. It's really good to drive, handles well. Uh, but in this mission, I need to drive to the airport to steal a car or whatever. Um, you need to hit this marker on the outside, and then as you go in, it will spawn the car. Now, here I'm going to do a little thing. Uh, it's a little trick. There's like... So, it's a bit dark, but there's like this curb here that goes around like that uh, and then you've got this pillar or whatever I'm going to drive right into this curb and then I'm going to bail out so CJ will instantly jump out of cars that are in the air but for some reason cars that are driving you have to like hold exit vehicle for ages in order for him to get out but because this little curb here the car will actually like pop up into the air uh, and then with that, I can just like jump out instantly. I actually mess it up in this run and roll out. But you can like just fall out of the car instantly. And it's like much faster than doing that. So I mess it up in this run. Good demonstration. Anyway, I get into the car and then I'm turning around. Uh, a van blocks your way here. So you can't, you could squeeze your way that way. But it's actually better to just drive around and go down like this other path here. Um... Driving down this path. Oh, I jumped a lot. Uh, so there's a few guys that try to stop you or whatever, but... I'm just... You're so fast when you do this in runs that your your damage bar just doesn't matter at all. And you just completely ignore everybody. Which is what I do. I'm just ignoring everyone and just keep on driving. Uh, ooh, almost hit that. That was almost terrible. Uh, but this is a pretty long drive, though. Here, you get two bikes that spawn with, like, guys on the back shooting you. Um, you can sort of lose them at the start here because they get kind of like confused with which way you're going or whatever. But as you, as I get down here, they'll, they'll like catch me. So just wait for that to happen. Uh, here they go. Sort of catching me. I'm trying to demonstrate something, but I need them to be visible for me to demonstrate it. Uh, I guess I don't let them be visible. I'm not sure. Oh no, there he is. 
Good enough. So, while they're chasing you, so like, here, here's you, right? While they're chasing you, they always try to stay, like, one on the left and one on the right. And they always seem to keep, like, this same, like, lateral distance to your car. Um, knowing this, and also they'll, like, avoid obstacles and stuff. But knowing this, one thing they're really bad at uh, avoiding is lampposts, uh, just like me. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to line up the car. Do you see I'm sort of doing it? I'm trying to line up the car where the, the like, sideways distance that they're trying to stay away from me, they'll just drive into the lamppost, right? Uh, I don't get it there, and I don't quite get it there, and then I've got the other one who's going to stay, like, here on my side. But this one I make hit this pole, and this one I make hit this pole. Do you see like that? Because I know exactly like how far to the side they're going to stay from me. So that's how I can lose those two guys like that. And then up here like another car spawns but you just completely ignore him because he does nothing. And then here's this marker. And that's that mission done. I play a replay into the marker. It's faster, it makes vehicles spawn. Now here I have a decision to make. Um, what I can do is just death warp all the way to like whatever her, uh, Katie's house and then I can drive to like the skull which is like actually here or whatever. Um, and I could like, I, I want to have a fast vehicle for this because the next mission I'm about to do I need like I'm going to drive across the whole city with the vehicle so I really want a fast vehicle. So I could just death warp, play a replay, try to get a fast vehicle at Katie's house and then go. But what I'm going to do before that is I'm going to run up to the road and then have a look to see if I can find any fast vehicles. If I can, I'm just going to drive the Jizzy um, so that I know I have a fast vehicle. Because it isn't guaranteed that I'll get a fast one at Katie's house. Uh, I get a police car, which is decently fast, and I decide to take it. Um, actually, uh, sorry, not actually, but this also has the problem of, uh, obviously, I have wanted stars now. Uh, oh, there's an interesting detail that just happened. Um, so now I have two wanted stars, which is kind of upsetting, but it's not that bad. Not that big a deal. Um, but here, there's a minor detail. So as I get into the car, I start and then cancel Vigilante. Uh, what this is doing is it's making my tires bulletproof. So when you start Vigilante, the, the mission script Vigilante will make your tires bulletproof. Um, how many more circles am I going to draw? It'll make your tires bulletproof. And then when you cancel Vigilante, it doesn't take the bulletproofness away. So, whenever I get into a police car, I try... Obviously, you can't do this, like, on missions, because you can't start Vigilante unless, you know, you're doing glitches or whatever. Um, but, like, yeah, in these runs, I try to always start Vigilante so that I can't lose a tire. Because, yeah, there's, like, a cop who's, like, shooting at me a lot. And he could, like, hit my tire or whatever. So, now I have bulletproof tires, because I started Vigilante. Little tiny detail. Alright, so we're driving to the Jizzy mission. Uh, okay, it's a bit of a drive, but it's alright. Uh, again, could have made the drive shorter by death warping, but I wanted to make sure I get a good vehicle for this. Okay, so... This is T-Bone Mendez mission. Um... I'm driving up the hill. Yeah, so I'm just trying to take the shortest path possible to the place. Uh, and then here, there's a kind of interesting thing that happens. So I jump out of the car on this hill here. Oh my god, that's long. I'm trying to jump out of the car on this hill here. And you've got like... This, uh, this is a decent view of it. You've got three bikes here. And each bike has a little package on the back of it. And like a person riding it. Normally in this mission, what you do is you drive towards this, and there's like a big invisible like distance check around it. And as soon as you get inside this distance check, a cutscene will happen, and then the guy, uh, four dudes will drive away in like different directions. Uh, not quite like that, but that'll do. Four, the four dudes will drive away in different directions, and then you need to chase them all down and get. Uh, the packages or whatever. But what you can do using like the rifle or another long-ranged weapon 
is that you could sit outside of this circle and you can headshot these three guys at uh, and then when you do the actual mission, these guys start dead, and you can just take their packages and their bike and just drive away and chase the one last guy. Uh, there's more complications to this, though. If you miss a single shot, the cutscene will instantly trigger, because you like uh, if you alert these NPCs to like danger or whatever, the cutscene will start as well, which is Rockstar's like, attempt at stopping you from doing exactly this. But if you instantly, if you headshot these guys without missing, the other two don't get alerted. So I have to like very carefully, uh, I need to kind of want to show this. I have to very carefully line it up. And again, because of that grid system I described the other time where you can only like, you can, I can only have like my crosshair in like one grid or the next part of the grid or the next part of the grid. Sometimes it's not actually possible to get your crosshair perfectly on their head. So what I have to do is I have to like walk around to like move the crosshair around because I can't do it with my mouse because of the grid system. So here I'm going to very carefully, you can see me move, walking around to like line up with these guys' heads. So I shot those three. The cutscene triggers once you kill the third one for whatever reason. Uh, you get on this bike uh, and then these three guys are already dead. So I just turn around and take all their packages and then drive after the last guy who's like conveniently he drives towards Jizzy's house so that's really good and yeah that skipped most of this mission without having to like yeah don't no longer chasing everyone around or anything like that so driving up to this guy you yeah, take the package and then just drive back to Jizzy's place now this is also a good sequence because the next mission I get to use the bike to drive to the place as well, which is really handy. So yeah, here's oh god, I got an annoying. So this is the yay leaving San Fierro phone calls, which are really annoying, but I won't bother explaining them. They're just a little annoyance. Not really much you can do about them. Um, so in this mission, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to drive this car with T Bone in it to a bunch of other like random places that he tells you to go to until eventually you get to the airport and then you save people and drive back or whatever. Um, what I do instead is that I get into the car to trigger the next part of the mission and then I immediately get out, get on the bike and drive all the way to the airport. Um, for whatever reason, the way it's scripted, you don't actually need Mike with you and you don't actually need to use his car or anything like that. So... You can just instantly leave after getting into his car once and just... It tells you to go get T-Bone, but you just don't need to. Uh, let's not look at my bad driving. Uh, so you just drive all the way to the airport. Until eventually it'll forget about T-Bone. And it'll just... The mission will just progress. So... In this part of the mission... Um, as soon as you get to here... You have like this battery bar, or signal bar, sorry. That tells you how far away from the dudes you are is. Uh, there's three places the guys can spawn. There's like, at the very end of the runway. Then there's like, I'm trying to draw the map or whatever. Then you've got like, you've got like the tower, the aircraft control tower. Uh, they can spawn right behind it. Or you've got like these hangars or whatever. They can spawn in between the hangars. Uh, those are the three places they can spawn. And you can tell where they are based on the signal. So here, the bar is quite full. And the hangars are like the closest ones. So I kind of know they're at the hangars. And also, you go to the right here. If you go to the right and then the signal starts going down, then you know that they're all the way like on the left or whatever. Um, so you can sort of figure out what position they're in. It's important because you need to tr go to that position and then trigger them to get them to start moving. Um, but it matters less nowadays because we do like a cool strat now. Um, so in this airport, there's like a ton of flying vehicles, but they're all locked until you have a flying license. Uh, all but one for whatever reason. Also here they are, they spawned them between these two hangars. This helicopter, this Maverick... Is unlocked for whatever reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger them, which is convenient, and then I'm going to take the Maverick. 
Uh, and I'm going to use the Maverick for this mission. So off they go, flying away. I'm going to uh, drive away and I have to like chase them. Now this is a little awkward here because I'm kind of low on health. And there's a lot of dudes here and they're going to shoot me. So I need to be a bit careful. But I also need to park the helicopter kind of close. Um, as soon as I'm done killing them, I need to get into the helicopter to make sure it doesn't despawn. But you see here, I mess up the landing and I'm like way too close to them. So it's like six guys right here. They all have SMGs. And your, your, your biggest... Your biggest combat advantage in this game is having longer range than the enemies. That's like your main winning strategy to win these gunfights. Is to just stay far away from them. So while I could just sit here, crouch, and like try to shoot them all one by one. They'll probably win this fight. So I have to use like distance advantage. So I sprint away, and then you can see I can shoot them from here. But they're struggling to like shoot me, right? This guy's like crouching here and stuff. So from here, I can shoot these guys. I just barely live like this. I just barely live. So I probably should have ran away a bit further. But had this fight gone a little bit worse, I would have been killed. But yeah, distance is your biggest advantage. But the problem is, like I said, I need to get into the helicopter before the cutscene starts to stop it from despawning. So I need to be close to the heli, but I also need to be... Like... I can't just... When they stop like this... I can't just land here... Because there's another distance check invisible circle around them that's like this... And I need to get inside this circle to make the guys come out of the van. It's possible for me to shoot them while they're in the van, I think. Uh, but I'll probably end up killing um, Mike... To uh, sorry, Mike end up killing Torino, uh, who's actually in the van. And if you kill him, you fail the mission. So I had to get within the close circle, but then I had to not be too close because I didn't want to die. But it takes forever to get out of the helicopter. So yeah, this was like a really awkward situation and I almost died. Um, what I should have done was shoot this guy, but I'm trying to shoot the ones that are like next to each other, right? And also I'm walking forwards, which is really stupid. But that could have been the end of the run right there, and I got quite unlucky. And yeah, I do manage to get back into the helicopter before the cutscene starts, which makes it not despawn. So here it is. So now I need to blow up the van. I just shoot the, shoot the gas tank here to blow it up. Uh, and then we're going to use the helicopter to escape. So, I've got two stars right now, but I think those are just stars for, like, killing people and blowing stuff up. But, in order for the mission to progress, you need to, like, leave the airport or whatever. Um, what I need to do is travel far enough west. Um, yeah, that's right. I need to travel far enough west... And then there's like this invisible line again, where if my coordinates get far enough west or whatever, uh, it will trigger it will trigger the rest of the mission. People will start talking, and I'll get given free stars. Um, so what I have to do here is fly far enough west to trigger that. So I'm just going straight west here, until eventually, if we watch my stars, they'll go to free, and then people will start talking. Um, there is this marker here, but you don't actually need to hit it. All you need to do is go far enough west. So I go far enough west, which is just past this building. Right now. And then it says, lose the heat, get to the paint spray. Uh, and then the guys start talking. So now you need to lose the wanted star. In ye olden days, you would take a bunch of bribe stars. Because uh, there's like one under this bridge. And then there's like one here. And then, while you drive to Jizzy, you'd lose the last star. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is something really cool. I'm going to use the pain spray with the helicopter. <laughs> uh, it looks impossible, and it probably should be. But for whatever reason, the collision around the pain spray is really weird. So you've got the door here, or whatever. And the, the rotor blades are, like, bigger than the door, but they can fit in. But if you drive into, like, the side of a building or whatever, the helicopter will hit it and then you'll, like, bounce off of it or whatever. Or if you stay next to it, you'll, like, grind up against it and then the helicopter will blow up. But for whatever reason, 
you can actually squeeze into the pain spray and there's only a few walls and things you actually need to avoid. So you've got these air conditioners at the top left here and you've got these like air conditioners here. And for whatever reason, these are the only objects you actually need to avoid. But the problem is the ones on the left are really low down. Um, so it's like a real pain in the butt. But you could just about, you see I'm like going through walls and stuff. But like, I'm, j I'm like grinding on that air conditioning thing back there, see? But you need to stop the helicopter, land it, and then you get the pain spray to spray it. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting out. So I can't go up or I'll start colliding with like whatever object it is here and that will like destroy the heli. And I can't go up over this way because you've got these things here. I don't know, for whatever reason, up has collision. I don't know exactly what causes it. So, but the problem is I need to reverse out. So you have to like very carefully like lean the helicopter out. And in this run, you see I like collided with this a little bit. In this run, I make this look really easy, but it really isn't. <laughs> it's actually quite tricky to like squeeze it in there. But yeah, it goes really smoothly. I squeeze the helicopter in. I avoid all of the collision boxes. I haven't been doing this strat for that long, so I might not fully understand how that works. But it's something like that to like squeeze in there. I, I think it is just the air conditioning units I need to avoid. I'm not 100% certain. But anyway, this is like kind of fast. Like it might have been faster to just drive the car out or a Sultan or something like that to just drive that out of the... The airport and stuff instead. Um, oh, I messed that up here. Um, but the next part, using the helicopter for the next part is really fast. But there's also another thing I'm trying to do here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to hit this marker and rotate to the left, sort of. Um, or to the right or whatever. When I hit this marker, the helicopter is going to keep drifting forwards. And after this mission, after this cutscene, I want to go this way. So what I'm trying to do is hit this marker and rotate to the right. So then I'll hit this wall here. And this wall is angled just a little bit this way. So if I hit this wall, it will push me this way. And then I'll hit this wall and it will push me this way. So I can like do a U-turn in the middle of this cutscene to like turn around and head the direction that I want to head. Unfortunately, I missed the marker. And I just end up doing the, the crash into the wall U-turn manually instead, which wastes a bit of time. This cutscene here. See, it just keeps going. So I can turn the helicopter around in this cutscene. But yeah, I messed it up. But it doesn't matter that much. It's only a, a minor optimization. And yeah, and then that's that mission done. So the helicopter doesn't save too much time in this mission. But where it does save a lot of time is flying to Woozy. So I can like skip all of these wiggly roads and crap trying to get to where Woozy is. Or death warping or whatever. And instead I could just fly over all these buildings and just land straight outside his house. The one thing I'm worried about is my health. Uh, so I actually land really carefully because I don't want to die. In, um, so I actually just land the helicopter. But normally I would just like fly over the marker and just jump out and be fine or whatever. But yeah, that car almost killed me as well. <laughs> right. Anyway, into the marker and then it's time for the... One of the most boring missions in the entire game. It's Lure. Yay. So in this mission, you have to drive this vehicle basically across the entire map. And not really too much interesting happens. Uh, the route out of San Fierro is kind of interesting. Cut across the... Whatever this is called. Um, workshop or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> What's it? Construction yard. Uh, cut across it diagonally. Drive down this road. Go down this hill to like gain speed or whatever. Um, and then it's time to set up for like the most interesting strat. The only interesting strat in this whole mission. So drive up the motorway. Now up here if I... Oh god that's a bit of a spoiler. Uh, up here there's like this bit here. As I stop despawning traffic. There's this here right. Now what you're supposed to do is drive along here and then go across a bridge and then follow this road. Here's the bridge up here. And then follow this road and drive along there. What I'm going to do instead is just jump across this, this river. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's actually quite far. And there's no like upwards ramp or anything. And you're in a really slow car. Um, and if we watch, I just barely land it here. If I'd been a little further back, I would have slid into the water. 
but I just barely land it, uh, the, barely land the crucial cut. But what you have to do beforehand is because this car has such terrible acceleration and top speed, I'm basically setting up for this trick all the way back here. So here I have to maintain my speed. If I lose my speed, I might not make it. So I'm really aggressively despawning the traffic here to try to like make it so I have a clear shot. If I crash or hit anything, I have to bail and drive around the long way. So I'm really aggressively despawning and trying to set up on the absolute max speed of this vehicle. And I just, if we like frame advance, I just barely make it. If this rear wheel had like landed like a little bit further back, I would have just slid backwards into the water instead. So this was really close. I like barely made that. Um, but yeah, that's the only interesting strat in this whole mission. <laughs> uh, and now we're just driving. Uh, so there's a, little, there's a little marker over here. Have to hit the marker. Uh, there's two guys that spawn and they chase you, but they're so pathetic that you just kind of ignore them. Um, you can drive them into walls a bit. So like, and you do have a damage bar, but like, they just stick to the side. Just like that other mission. One sticks to the side here, the other sticks to the side here. Um... But you just make them hit that ramp, he's gone, and then the other one hits this wall, and he's gone, and then that's it. If you do this mission correctly, you never see them again. So, it's just a whole bunch of driving. Nothing interesting happening. More driving, more driving, yada yada yada. Um, yeah, I just skipped this entire mission, basically, by going forwards in VLC. Uh, and then hit this marker, and then that's that. Now, there is one thing here. There's this petrol station here, and there's like these petrol pumps, right? Or gas pumps, or whatever. Uh, if a car drives into these, they'll explode, and it's a really big explosion, and you're just fucked, and you die. Um, so I want to drive through it, because it's the shortest path. And I'm not worried about me hitting it, I'm worried about a car from the motorway just going, ah, and just YOLOing into it and killing me. Um, but... It sometimes happens, but not this run. <laughs> but just thought I'd note that. Uh, now I'm driving up to that bit in Angel Pine where we use for the Badlands. There's like a save point here and a Sanchez. So I'm just going to go over here and save at this point. I kind of block myself with the car, which was pretty smart. But yeah, just save to get some health and then take the Sanchez to drive back with. So nothing too interesting. Just driving, driving, driving. Uh, right, what's the next mission? Outrider. Oh, good. Oh, good. Buckle up, kiddos. It's time for explaining. So, in this mission, if I just skip forwards, there's this van and this bike. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get on the bike and drive it all around the city for a bunch of roadblocks. And there's like a, a, f a few roadblocks along the way. That you need to like blow up in order to make space for the van. But the thing is the van will drive at a set speed along this route. No matter what you do. As long as you have got rid of the roadblock before he gets there and he just doesn't stop. Uh, you can't influence him in any other way. You can't make him faster or anything. So what we used to do is we would drive along, blow up all the roadblocks. And then we'd go to like the water, get the NRG... And then just swim and train lung capacity. Uh, but we don't do that anymore because we have this really cool skip instead. So if I go back a bit. Um, yeah, here's this little jump. There's this little, there's another invisible like, like collision, uh, sorry, distance detections. So once you get close enough to this, a cutscene will start. Um, and then just drive up. So what the game wants you to do is drive into this marker. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the car around and just barely drive up to this marker but not actually hit it. And then I'm going to get out of the car, right? Um, and then I'm going to run over here, pick up the rockets and snipper because those are good weapons. And then I'm very carefully, very, very carefully going to position myself here. There's this gray mark with like white around it that's my reference point for roughly where i want to stand and also this wheel here 
So I'm going to very carefully stand just probably about here-ish. It's very vague, my setup. But I'm going to stand very carefully, like, right there. Yep, there we go. So I'm, like, in line with this. Here's the wheel. I'm to the left of this white mark. And here's the smudge and everything. Oops, I punched my microphone a lot. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the satchel at max strength uh, that way. Um, and then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to detonate the satchel. Now this looks really weird, but what I'm doing is by detonating the satchel is that I'm setting this van on fire with explosion. And it also pushes the van forwards a bit. Um, there's an a there's a man in this van and the doors are like super ultra omega locked like there's no way to unlock them even with like a homie or whatever um but what i'm doing is by having this explosion happen and the van catching fire and the van being pushed forwards the guy just jumps out of the van like you can see he like rolls out or whatever okay you can't quite see it um but this is like really precise because if the satchel's too close to the van, I'll just blow it up and instantly fail the mission. If the satchel's too far away from the van, I'll really damage it, but I won't blow it up. Uh, sorry, I won't set it on fire and the guy won't jump out. Um, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to set up a situation where he jumps out of the van and leaves the door open. And then I can get into the van and drive it straight to the end. Because the guy takes like a really long route to get to the place. But I can just drive it straight up. And there's like a trigger that if a van gets sued to, the mission will pass. So by very carefully positioning myself here. And throwing this satchel. And then running over to here. I've set the van on fire. It's with an explosion and it's moved forwards. The guy jumps out like this and rolls out. And then... Obviously, the problem now is that the van's on fire is about to blow up. So what I'm going to do then is get into this car, and then I'm going to drive into this marker. Now, there's a thing in this game where when a fade-out starts, or cutscene start, or whatever, any vehicles that are on fire that are about to blow up, they get set to one health. Exactly one. And that prevents them from exploding like in cutscenes or anything so what i'm going to do is i drive into the marker here just by going a little bit forwards it has to be really close because the van like is right about to explode um and i just just get into this cutscene and now the his here's the guy that was driving it he's running away because he's terrified but now the van is like very deep black smoke it literally has a single health point if it takes a single bit of damage it will catch fire again um, but thankfully, this van is, like, crash-proof, so it won't actually blow up if I hit a wall or anything. But that doesn't matter. That's how, that's how that works. So if you ever have, a, like, a, if you're ever, if your car's ever on fire and you're right next to a cutscene, just keep going, get into the cutscene, you'll be fine. But anyway, more importantly, we can see that this door is open sesame, open areno, whatever you want to call it. Um, just keep drawing while I'm like thinking about what to say next. Um, so yeah, now I can get into this van and drive it to the end. But there's one small final catch. It's that in order to progress the mission, I need to get on the bike. So I have to get on this bike. But as soon as I get onto the bike, that guy who was scared and ran away, he's going to come back and try to get into the van. So what I need to do here, what I'm checking, is that the door can open, like, in different ways. So this one's good. This one's pretty open. But sometimes it can only open, like, a little bit or whatever. Uh, and then that's, like, not open enough for CJ to try to get in. And he'll just, like, pull up the door handle that isn't there and won't be able to get in. Or sometimes the door is, like, swinging loads. And it's, like, out here or whatever. And it's about to, like, hit the hinges and then start swinging back and close or whatever. Um, so I check here and say if the door is, like, barely open or it's about to swing back or whatever. What I could do is push the van this way, like, just with CJ. 
and the door will have like its own little physics or whatever and will start to swing open more. So I have to make sure that the door is going to be open before I get on the Sanchez. Because if I get on the Sanchez first and then try to push the van, the guy is just going to come back and just get into the van and close the door and then I'm fucked, right? <laughs> so I'm checking the van. Hopefully, uh, thankfully the door's open enough so I don't need to push it, but I just get on the Sanchez and then get off of it. And then you see here comes the guy again. He's here. He's here to drive his van. So I have to then quickly get into the thing, and then as soon as I get into it, he gets scared and runs away. But there you go, that's how I stole this fan, or whatever. Um, kind of a detailed sequence break. It took a took a few years to find that. I don't remember who found it. I think it was a community effort, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like a bunch of people in the community came together and found this, which was really cool. And it's good, because this mission's terrible, and it's great that we can skip it now. But anyway, uh, a little funny thing happens here. So, right as I drive into this compound, I play a replay uh, right now, and I play it at exactly the perfect time to completely skip this fade out. So if I play this in slow motion, you'll see that no fade fade out happens, and um, eventually a frame happens where the cutscene just starts here. So the cutscene has like started now. Normally this transition here, this is this is hidden by the fade out happening but because i played the replay at exactly the right time i completely skipped the fade out and we get to see behind the curtain a bit at like the cutscene being set up or whatever so that was kind of fun but yeah that's outrider skip that's how that works there are a bunch of other setups where you can use like the rocket launcher and shoot a certain part of the wall or put a bunch put a satchel other places or some other stuff i'm not sure um, but I like that setup because it's like the simplest for me. I don't know. I, I get that one most of the time. But yeah, it is pretty finicky and sometimes I don't pull it off and I have to try the mission again. Okay. Next is... What mission is this? <laughs> uh, is this Snail Trail? It is Snail Trail. Okay, cool. So from a really fun mission, well, was a boring mission, to a really boring mission. Um, in this mission, you need to pick up the sniper rifle, and as soon as you do, a train is going to pull into the station with a, a target on it, and then it's going to drive away at hyperspeed, and you need to, like, follow it or whatever. And you need to follow it, like, all the way to Los Santos... Uh, and then the guy will get out at a train station, and then you need to follow him all around Los Santos and crap. Um, but thankfully, we have a skip for at least the train part of it. So, the sniper rifle is like, if I go forward a bit, the sniper rifle is inside these two, this tube here. And the reason it's in here is to prevent you, I think, I think it's in here, to prevent you from getting to the train station too quickly. But what I do is I pick up this Sanchez and then I drive, this is the Sanchez you're supposed to use to follow the train. But I pick it up now and then I bring it to the sniper rifle and I get in the sniper rifle and then as soon as I pick up the sniper rifle, I just book it to the train station. So I get the sniper rifle and it's like go, 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 go. So I have a limited amount of time to get to this train station. Now, what I'm going to do, whoops, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ride this train that the guy is in. Uh, there's this little known feature in this game where you can actually, like, teleport around the map using trains as a passenger. So, what the, what's going to happen is the train pulls into the station and then it sits there and waits for you. And as soon as you get close enough, it takes off at hyperspeed. But because the train is still pulling into the station, it's traveling slow enough that I can actually get into it and ride it as a passenger. And you'll see, look here, it starts taking off at hyperspeed. You're not supposed to be able to ride this train with the, the guy in it. But because I managed to get in it, I can use the feature where you skip to the next station or whatever. And that teleports the whole train to San Fierro. Which is really useful because not only do I teleport to San Fierro, but so does the target because he's on the train with me. <laughs> it's like really clever strat. Um, and it has a, a funny history of how it was found. But I'll uh, let you investigate that yourself. Anyway, 
now that the the reporter is at Los Santos, um, he's gonna get out of the train and he's gonna walk up the station really slowly until he gets to like the sidewalk here, and then he's gonna hail a taxi and a taxi's gonna like drive to him, and then the taxi's gonna drive all the, across the city until he gets to the pier or whatever. While he's going up the train station, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go train the rest of my lung capacity here. So you remember I, I talked about how I was going to train the rest of it here. So I just sit here, you know, not just diving and not doing anything, training my lung capacity until I get it. And then by the time I finished with that, the reporter reaches the sidewalk, see? So it's pretty good timing. Um, and then I get to here, and then he finds his taxi. As So there's like... There's like uh, another collision detection box around him. And as soon as you get close enough, the taxi spawns and he'll go get in it. So he goes and gets in this taxi. Uh, and now, yeah, now it's just a matter of keeping the spooker meter low enough. Um, the only real way you could speed this up is by despawning traffic in front of him. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just despawning traffic. Um, and yeah, and I'm also keeping an eye out, or I should be. Keeping an eye out for faster vehicles to use. Because after this mission, I need to drive all the way back to San Fierro. So having a fast vehicle is a good idea. Uh, thankfully, in this run, I get really lucky and I just find an FCR. This this is the fastest vehicle I could find in this situation. There is no other faster vehicle. So I got really lucky here. Uh, but yeah, still following him. Uh, there's like three different routes he can take. Uh, but it's not really that relevant, and you can't really control them, so it's just really up to RNG how much time you lose here. It's kind of unfortunate. Uh, and it's a shame that we don't have a strat to, like, skip this whole thing. Eventually, someday, someone will find a way to skip this, but until then, we have to just, like, slowly following follow him around the city, and it's kind of crap. Right, so anyway, um, I'm going to snipe him, snipe him and the guy he's meeting from a distance. Because you need to kill these two guys, and I'm just going to do it from back here. Um, like that, so I don't have to bother traveling up and down the pier or anything. Uh, and now I'm just going to drive all the way back to San Fierro, basically. So, heading back to San Fierro... Um, there is one thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to drive down this tunnel and I'm going to jump across this gap into the airport. And not only is that faster for getting back into San Fierro, there's also this NRG that spawns here. And this is like the fastest land vehicle in the game, as I've probably previously explained. So I'm just going to leave the second fastest land vehicle and I'm going to take the fastest land vehicle. And I'm going to use this... For a whole bunch of sa the rest, well, I'm going to use it for almost all of the rest of San Fierro now, basically. Uh, just drive this bike around. So, up here, uh, annoyingly, the next mission, I can only start at certain times of day, and it's the wrong time of day. So, I'm just going to save to advance time by six hours. But I, ha I make sure I park my bike far enough away that it doesn't despawn. I could park it in the garage, obviously, but that's kind of slow. So I just park it over here so it doesn't despawn. And then this is Ice Cold Killer. So in this mission... Um, in this mission, Jizzy is in... That's a good camera angle. Jizzy is inside this his club or whatever. And you basically just need to kill him. Um, the game expects you to go up to this marker here. But then these guards just tell you to go away, basically. And then it tells you to get onto the roof to find another way in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up these, like, you know, the thing that it wants you to do, the construction site, and then drop down and then go in or whatever. But before I'm going to do that, when I go in there and Jizzy comes out of the club, he's going to take his pimp mobile and drive away. What you can do is blow up the pimp mobile, and then he steals a pizza boy's moped instead which is slower and it's like easy to catch him on that and everything but i'm actually going to do something else instead this is a really really old strat from like 2012 i think uh a runner named inspired found it and he called it the six plus one strat and i always remember it as that 
So here, if I actually like turn on the audio quick, uh, track one, and I go back a bit, so you can hear me actually, talking. I should probably move it a bit closer than that. So this is lot. This is like runner Josh talking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this car six times. So I'm going to go one like this. Two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Um, ooh, wrong audio track. Uh, no, right audio track. Um, why is there no sound? Oh, there is sound. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So, so I shot this guy. Uh, I shot this vehicle six times. Uh, what this has done is it set the health of the vehicle to like really low. Like one more shot and it's going to catch fire. So the the car's at six, uh, really low health now after six sniper shots. I'm going to drop down and then go in here and then just jump over the railing immediately. What the game wants you to do here is like go down here and like stealth your way past a bunch of stuff and go down low. But what you could do instead is just jump over the railing and you just skip all of the stealth stuff, which is really funny. Um, so do that. Then run over to here. And then as soon as I get out, GC and a bodyguard are going to get in the car. But you can see it's smoking from where it's so damaged. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the plus one. So I'm going to shoot it once, once with the sniper. Like that, so it catches fire and he jumps out. And then I'm going to shoot it with a rocket to blow up him and the car, but I don't quite get it here. Now, the reason you do that, instead of just firing a rocket at the car and just blowing it up, is because if Jizzy dies in the car, uh, the phone gets destroyed and you fail the mission. So you need Jizzy to be out of the car before you kill him, which is really annoying. But yeah, blow it up. What's supposed to happen is he's supposed to die to the double explosion, <laughs> but I kind of keep messing the strat up. So I just shotgun him instead, grab the phone, and then do a little jump as I answer the phone there. So I'm moving in the cutscene a little bit, and that's that mission. And then my NRG, which I parked carefully, is still here, and then I'm going to take it to the next mission. So next is... Amphibious Assault, I believe? So this is the mission that I needed lung capacity for. So yeah, I can just start it. Yep, just driving the bike around, nothing too interesting. Uh, so Amphibious Assault is a swimming mission. You're supposed to swim to a place, avoid a bunch of guards by being stealthy and, yeah, set a bug or whatever. But I'm not going to do any of that. Instead, I'm going to park my bike on, like, the white section here, just a little bit away from this marker. When you go into this marker, it will despawn everything in a radius around it. But by parking it here, I'm just barely, like, out of this radius. So, I'm going to go back in. Also, I'm not playing a replay here, because if I do that, I'm going to despawn the dinghy I'm about to use. But anyway, this bit, you're supposed to, like, swim through all these rocks or whatever and get to, like, the tanker or whatever. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to turn around, climb this rock, and, like, climb out like this. And then I'm going to jump across. I don't actually need to hit that marker. And then I can climb up these rocks and then get out. And then my bike's still here from where I parked it. So, I'm going to take the bike, I'm going to drive it over here, and I'm going to just basically yeet it, like throw it around, away like that, uh, and it'll stay there for later. And then down here, this dinghy only spawns if you don't play a replay going into the marker for some reason. Uh, so, I'm going to run down here, take the armor, and then get in the dinghy, and I'm just going to drive this to the mission instead. Being I'm being careful not to fall into the water here. So as soon as you touch, like, ocean water, for whatever reason, or I guess it's as soon as you touch water that isn't inside, like, a radius here, um, you'll trigger the next part of the mission, and the guards will become active. But because I haven't touched the water yet, the guards aren't active. So because they're not active, I could just drive past them like this, and they just don't even do anything, see? It's just They just idle there and not do anything. Uh, and then I'm gonna drive around, and then here I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to drive the boat this way, and jump out, like, here, and climb up this thing. And the boat is gonna keep drifting up to here, and then later in the mission I'm gonna jump down from here and go into the boat, because I left it over there. So, get out. As soon as I get into the water, that cutscene starts, and all of a sudden there's a bunch of enemies on the map. 
But I'm already past them. And then here, you're supposed to stealth kill these guys. But I just don't. Because they only have knives. So there's, like, no reason to do it. You just shoot them all in the face. Like, whatever. It's just... Yeah. So... Shoot all these guys in the face. And then... Trigger the fit, trigger the bug or whatever. Leave, and then jump to the side and my boat's right here, see? Perfect. Strats. <laughs> uh, and then drive around. These guys are going to shoot me now, but... The boat... Or it, I mean, they don't see me, there you go. But the boat has enough health to survive it. Uh, and then... Here, you have to get out really early in order to actually be able to jump out. So I get out super early there, and then land perfectly on this platform, which is good. And then I run around here, and then my bike is still there from earlier, so I can keep using it. And it's also pointed the right way, because when you eat it, it does a 180 for whatever reason. Now, the next mission. This one's Pier 69. Um, when I go close to Caesar... There's, it's going to despawn all the vehicles in a radius around him. Uh, so what I'm going to do with the bike is I'm going to very carefully park it. Like, you see this line here. The radius comes to, like, just here or whatever. Um, so if I park the bike here, it just barely doesn't despawn. So I park it up there. And then... It won't, yeah, I push it a little bit because it's a bit too close. But yeah, parking it there and it won't despawn when they talk to Caesar. Um, there are strats here to use rockets to snipe these guys with. Uh, for some reason, this guy was really invincible this run. I don't know why. In the end, I just headshot him because he's being an ass. But yeah, you could use rockets to shoot them. You basically shoot rockets like here, here, and then like here or whatever. But you have to be careful to not kill these guys, I think. Right, and then after sniping them, you turn around, and go back to the bike, which didn't despawn, and then carefully drive it down the off the side. And then what you're supposed to do is like fight your way into here and kill all these guys or whatever. But what I'm going to do is just drive around and go straight to T-Bone. Uh, and then you could either shoot him or run him over. I think I shoot him this run, yeah. Shooting is technically faster because you can shoot him before you run him over because you're further distance or whatever. And then his rider. What you're supposed to do is get into the boats. You're supposed to like jump over the wall and like swim and chase after him. But what I'm just going to do is just snipe him from a distance instead. He takes two shots and then he's dead. And that's the mission done and we can move on. He basically never really interact with rider. You just kill him. <laughs> if you watch this run and you don't know the story or whatever, you might not know that you actually kill rider there, which is kind of funny. Good. Alright, then on to the next part. Gonna drive over to uh, Torino's last flight. Now, here, what I was supposed to do is drive the bike into the garage and then switch to the Sanchez and use the Sanchez for this mission. But I forgot to do it, and instead I'm using the, the NRG instead. This is a, a cool looking bike. Uh, good enough. Um, I don't know why I did that. But yeah, so I make a bit of a mistake here and take the wrong bike, which slows me down later in the run. It's faster now, obviously, because the NRG is faster than the Sanchez. You can see here I sort of realize when I'm like, ah, sorry, I've come this far. Um... But yeah, it's like, it's faster now, because this is faster than the Sanchez, but I could have used the NRG more if I'd stored it, because I'm going to lose it right here. So here there's a helicopter, you need to blow it up, it has Torino in it. Um, what you're supposed to do is, you go up these stairs or whatever, um, as soon as you get to this point here, there's like a cutscene that happens where the helicopter flies away. So what I do is I just jump off, and then I basically just run straight into this cutscene trigger that's here. Like that, right? So it just instantly triggers the cutscene by doing that. Um, and then then we'll get to play this in slow motion, I think. So then the helicopter will take off. 
you're stood up here now, which is like a, a slightly higher platform from where you were. Um, or me, or whatever. So then he's gonna take off, and then I'm gonna do the quick kill here. So what you're supposed to do is chase him around and shoot him with a rocket or whatever. But what I'm gonna do is as soon as I spawn, I'm gonna turn around, select the rockets, and it looks like that you could just shoot him now. Like, if I just shot this way, I could shoot him. But just barely visible is this here. It's really hard to see, but I don't know if you can see that line there, and then this line. There's, like, this mesh platform thing right in front of my face. And the hitbox for it is, like, this. <laughs> so, if I try to shoot like this... I'm just going to blow myself up on this tiny bit of hitbox here. And it's really annoying. And it's like really difficult to see and it trips you up a lot if you're not watching out for it. So what I do instead is that you see... Okay, that's a better angle of it. See, you can see it here. Look, it's poked out here. So what I do instead is I aim as f left of it. Far enough left to like not hit its stupid big hitbox. And then I'm basically just going to shoot the helicopter very carefully. I am way left actually. But I just anticipate where it's going to go. I know where it goes. It goes here, and then around, and then up, like this. So I just anticipate it, shoot where it's going to go, and then I prepare for the backup spot. So this, there's a setup for a fast kill here. You see this wall here? As soon as the helicopter, uh, like, touches... As soon as the helicopter touches this section of wall here. Um, that's pretty good, I think. As soon as the helicopter touches this wall here, if you aim exactly here, you'll kill it. Because the rocket will hit this bit and the resulting explosion will hit the helicopter and you'll blow it up. But... While I'm waiting for the helicopter to fly over here, I just take a pot shot at it and just shoot here. And in this run, I actually managed to hit it dead on like that. Um, I actually want to show this in slow motion because it's cool. <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. All right. So, yeah, I just I sort of line up, make sure I avoid this crap here, and I just take a pot shot at it like that. You could probably find now that I'm looking at this. You could probably find a setup for this. So let's see, where do I shoot? I shoot... This is strat finding instead of commentary now. I shoot like right above... So there's like this little pokey outy bit of this tree here, like this. Can't see it because the video compression or whatever. But there's a little pokey out bit of this tree here. So as soon as the helicopter touches this window... You shoot at this little pokey uppy bit of this tree. I think that's the setup. Like that. And then he flies into it and gets blown up. Yeah. Yeah, that works actually. Okay. New setup. <laughs> I might try that in runs. But yeah, you might as well try it because there's a, a guaranteed setup again of when he hits this or whatever. So the, the one when he hits this is like really easy to do. But this one I just invented sounds pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna try that next time. Anyway, yeah, so that's that mission. Just a bunch of setups, basically. If you miss him here somehow, what you can do is... I'm messing around with the sound a bit. Is you can go to here, and then shoot, like, this way, because the helicopter flies, like, over, over here. Or whatever. There you go. <laughs> anyway, that's that mission done. Moving on to the next one. Uh, what is the next one? The next one is the Denang Fang, right? Yep. Uh, let's see. So this is like an auto scroll at the start. Um, you have like a minigun or whatever. Oops. Um, there's a bunch of guys on this boat. It's actually important to shoot these guys because if you don't, they'll stay there for after the auto scroller. So I make sure to shoot them all. Uh, something that interesting. Then this guy spawns here. Uh, it's not actually possible to kill him if it isn't obvious. And after he shoots two rockets, your helicopter will blow up. Like that. You can sort of make it a tiny bit faster. The helicopter will explode when the rocket explodes. And it's possible to shoot the rocket. 
This doesn't explode it, but what it could do is redirect it. So if it comes out like this, and then I shoot it here, it could redirect into this wall and then blow up a little bit faster than if it traveled all the way to the helicopter. So that's why I'm shooting at him, to try to, like, redirect the rocket. And I think I actually do redirect the rocket, don't I? Yeah, you see the rocket goes down and to the left and just explodes off camera over here, which makes the helicopter blow up. So that's pretty good. Decent, I guess. Right, now this mission is an actual stealth mission for about five seconds. So there's this guy here. You've lost all your weapons. You only have your knife. Um, you need to, like, stealth kill this guy so he doesn't shotgun you to death. Because you've got to climb up all these boxes and it's kind of slow. So he has plenty of time to shotgun you to death if you don't kill him. So just kill that guy and then climb all these boxes as quick as possible. A uh, quick note about climbing animations, there's a fast one and a slow one. So the one I'm doing is the fast one, like this. Um, there's a slower one where if I, say I was stood here, and I tried to climb up to here, right? CJ would run up, he would like, grab this with his hands, like this. Uh, like that. And then he'd slowly pull himself up, right? That's the slow climbing animation. The one I'm doing is like the faster one where like he just sort of like hits, gets his leg up on it and just climbs over it. Um, I'm trying to like intentionally climb shorter distances to always only do the, the big jump. So here, for example, right? It looks weird. Like it, I should just go this way and climb this box, right? And then I would skip having to climb this box. But if I did that, I would do the really slow climbing animation. So it's actually faster to climb this one and then this one and do steps like that. So that's why I climb like all the little boxes like that. Because this animation is so much faster than the other one. Right, and then here... Oh god, my throat is really sore. <laughs> it's really starting to give out. I'm doing all of this in one take, if it wasn't obvious. So then here, you've got these boxes here that you want to climb up and you've got these little boxes here um, and there's like this platform here what we used to do is jump from this platform to this box then just like slowly climb up this or use this box to like climb up quicker um, but there's a new strat where if you sprint along this and then turn sharply left and jump I'll play it in slow motion, it's very fast. Sprint, and then just, like, coyote time jump here. Look, I'm in the I'm in the air, see? But then I somehow managed to jump off of nothing. Uh, this is a video game thing called uh, coyote time, which is a reference to, like, old cartoons. Um, in every game you've ever played, that's good, right? They have, like, this built-in, like, thing where... Say I wanted to jump off this platform here, right? You'd think that the last second I could jump would be here. Because, you know, I can't jump in midair. That doesn't make any sense. But in video games, they actually give you this thing called coyote time. Which lets you jump shortly after leaving the ground. Because it turns out players in their head, they think that they're jumping here. But because they're so delayed, they're actually jumping here. So every game dev has to give you a little bit extra time to jump. Otherwise people get frustrated and think that the jumping mechanics is shit. So if you've ever played a game where jumping off of stuff is really awkward, it's because they didn't do that, right? So in this game, because this game's good, they do give you a bit of coyote time. So you could walk off the edge and then still jump, right? So that's what I'm abusing here. I like... I, like, run around, and then if you look where my feet are, right, here, here's, here's the edge right here, right, and I'm, like, I'm off the edge now. I'm off the edge now. I'm still off the edge, right, and then I take another step over nothing, and then I jump. Do you see? So this is coyote time. So a lot of games have this where they let you do it, as I've explained, because... Yeah, it's like a weird game development thing where people think that they're jumping at the right time, but they're not. <laughs> and everybody does it. It's like a, just a human reaction thing. Anyway, um, back to less game dev things and more speedrun things. Sorry, just interjecting some game dev there. 
Um, I'm, I'm, I'm running to the health here, and I'm just gonna ignore all these enemies, basically. There's, like, no reason to kill them. They can't kill me quick enough. Uh, this is another- I'm just gonna let it play. This is another common speedrunning thing, or, like, just general gameplay thing, right? Where, if I was to stand and fight those guys, I would take more damage than if I just ran past them, right? Whoopsie. Uh, sorry about the microphone punching constantly. Um, so it's actually better to just run past these guys. Sure, I could stand there and kill them with the gun I have, but in the time it takes me to kill them, they would get shots off on me and I would take damage. So it's way more efficient, both speed and health-wise, to just run past them. And loads of games have this, and it's like... A thing that you learn when you're doing speedruns that, wait a minute, why don't I just run past these people? Here's the slow climbing animation I was talking about. Look how slow this is. Where he has to, like, climb up and then get his leg up. And then once he gets his leg up, he does this animation. It's like you're skipping animations. So if I go back, watch this animation. It, like, starts with CJ pulling himself up like this. And then he gets his leg up like that. And then this animation happens. Does that look familiar? It's the same animation for when he's doing the fast climb, right? So you just skip part of the animation by doing it that way. Anyway, again, climbing the fastest order of boxes. Uh, I don't need to kill this guy, but I don't. Good. It's just confusing. Uh, now here, up the top here, there's, a, there's an enemy that you need to kill. And this is the main object of the mission, is to kill this guy. Um... And what you're supposed to do is run into the cutscene, and then he gives you a sword, and you're supposed to have a sword fight with him. Uh, in old speedruns, we'd run into the cutscene, and then switch off of the sword, and just shoot him in the face, and then leave. Um, but it's actually possible to kill him before the cutscene. So here, I start aiming the gun. And with a very... the fade-out's happening, but with very careful shots here, I actually shoot him in the head before the cutscene starts like this. So he's already dead in this cutscene, do you see? So then I could just leave. Um, it's actually possible. He's he's here, right? He's right here. It's actually possible to kill him through the wall with like explosions and stuff like that. But obviously you don't have any weapons. Um, but what can happen is if you're incredibly lucky, is if like a plane crashes into the flipping building and kills him. <laughs> and that can happen, right? Uh, that's my diagram of a plane. So if a plane crashes into this and blows up and kills him, you would, like, skip a whole bunch of the mission. <laughs> so, there's one for the, the tassers of the world. If you want to make a tasser this game, make sure that happens, because that'd be flipping amazing. Anyway, he's dead. So, run away. I'm just ignoring these guys, because I'm going to death warp at the end of this mission here. So, climb up. Leave like this. Um, yeah, let's start this cutscene. And then I just shoot the boat after the cutscene until it blows up and I'll die. And I'll get death warped to the island. Um, this is a bit where Katie is actually slower. So before I would go to the hospital, but now because I have Katie, I go to Katie's house. Which is actually further away from the next mission. Uh, so I actually lose a bit of time here. So, yeah. But I do keep my weapons, though, even though they're crap and I don't really want them. <laughs> Alright. So, driving to the next mission. This is Yaker Boom Boom. Uh, the last mission of San Fierro. Uh, in we go. Uh, and I think this is going to be the last... This will be the last mission of this video, because my throat is really starting to <laughs> get sore now. So I'm not going to be able to do the desert, as I said I was going to do. Um, I'll have to do Los Venturas next video and then return to Los Santos in the final part. Anyway, um, again, it was very important to get a fast vehicle here because I'm going to use this fast vehicle a whole bunch, as you can see, until here. Uh, so drive into this marker. Uh, watch this cutscene. Start the next mission. Uh, not the next mission, part, next part of the mission. So you need to drive this vehicle into the place. Uh, to detonate a bomb or whatever. There's two guards outside. Uh, you need to kill them to trigger the next part of the mission. And it looks like my car's parked really badly here. But after this cutscene, the car gets like respawned to face like 
straight towards the gate like this. So then ignore all the enemies because there's no point fighting them. And then carefully drive my car into the factory. Now here, do you, if you remember earlier in Photo Opportunity, I talked about how you could control the pitch of your car in midair by letting go of the accelerate button. So you could control the pitch of the car, like up, down, like this. Um, well here what I'm doing, it's really tiny, but it's the only point in the run where this happens, so I want to explain it. All right, now I'm controlling the yaw of the car, which is left, right. So if we say if we say this is the car, and then here's the headlights or whatever. But here in midair, I'm controlling like the rotation of the car, the yaw of the car here. So what I'm doing is when you're in the air, if you hold handbrake and then turn left and right, instead of rolling the car left and right, um, like it normally would. If you hold handbrake, it actually controls the yaw of the car, left and right. So if we watch very carefully here, I go up this ramp, and I'm driving like this way, right? And if as I go up the ramp, I like the car twists in midair. Do you see that? It's like very hard to explain. But the car twists in midair. I don't really do a good job of it in this run. But you can like twist the car in midair and start driving this way as you go over that ramp. But... Yeah, I kind of messed it up here. But yeah, anyway, that's the only point I really use that mechanic, so I thought I'd explain it now. Right, so driver's his marker, press left click to trigger the cutscene. Again, screw fighting everybody, it's faster and I'll have more health if I just leave. Uh, I don't play the replay there, I miss it, which is kind of unfortunate. Things blow up, and then you need to leave. It says out of the main gates, but you don't actually need to leave out of the main gates. So what I do is I run up to this ramp, jump sideways like this, land out of the building, and then it seems to always be cars down this road for whatever reason. Uh, I get lucky and there's a police bike. So I take the police bike. Oh hey, pennies. And then pennies happen, nice. <gasps> and then um and then drive to the marker. <gasps> oh god, hiccups. Now as soon as you hit this marker, the mission instantly ends like that. And then that's San Fierro done! Hooray! Uh, now the next part, I'll explain till the start of the next mission. Um, now you have to drive to like the other island. You can drive across the bridge, but it's like actually faster to take a boat, as long as you don't fall off the bike like a moron. So here, I go over here, take this boat, um, I've already answered the phone call when I fell off the bike a minute ago. Um, but you need to answer the phone call to get the question mark marker. And then you drive the boat across the water to there. Now, there is this weird mechanic here. So, there's a group of rocks here. And a group of rocks here that spawn. And they're actually randomly generated. They spawn differently every time. So, if we look, I drive around them. But if we look here, these rocks that pop in... They're actually random. It's really weird. I don't know why it's like that, but there's just a little bit of procedural generation here. So again, those rocks are random. Thankfully, I don't get hit too badly by that one. But yeah, just a little note that those can sometimes ruin runs a bit by throwing you out of the water and stuff like that. And then here is the next mission. So that was San Fierro. Um... Sorry I'm not going to do the desert missions as well, but yeah, I am recording this all in one go. And I did like a two hour stream before this, so my throat is really killing me now. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Um, for part three, I'll do Los Venturas, and then part four, I'll do Return to Los Santos. Um, maybe i do them both in one go, but that'd be, no, that's horrendously long. No, no, I won't do that. <laughs> Return to Los Santos is going to be really short, though. I don't know, we'll see what happens. But anyway... Thanks a lot for watching part two of my uh, PB post-commentary video. And uh, yeah, see you for the next one where I do Monster Truck. Whoa, what are all the intricacies of this mission? <laughs> Not that many, but okay. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.